From the Wreck by Adam Lindsay Gordon Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer From the Wreck Turn out, boys! What's up with their super tonight? The man's mad! Two hours to daybreak, I'd swear! Stark mad! Why, there isn't a glimmer of light! Take bowling broke, Alec! Give Jack the young mare! Look sharp! A large vessel lies jammed on the reef, and many on board still, and some washed on shore. Ride straight with the news. They may send some relief from the township, and we, we can do little more. You, Alec, you know the near cuts. You can cross the sugar loaf ford with a scramble, I think. Don't spare the blood, Philly, nor yet the black horse. Should the wind rise, God help them. The ship will soon sink. Old Peter's away down the paddock to drive the nags to the stockyard as fast as he can. A life and death matter. So, lads, look alive. Half dressed in the dark to the stockyard, we ran. There was bridling with hurry and saddling with haste confusion and cursing for lack of a moon be quick with these buckles we've no time to waste mind the mare she can use her hind legs to some tune make sure of the crossing place strike the old track they fenced off the new one look out for the holes of the wombat hills down with the slip rails stand back and ride boys the pair of you ride for your souls in the low branches heavily laden with dew, in the long grasses spoiling with dead wood that day, where the blackwood, the box, and the bastard oak grew, between the tall gum trees we galloped away. We crashed through a brush fence, we splashed through a swamp, we steered for the north near the eagle hawk's nest, we bore to the left just beyond the red camp and round the black tea-tree belt wheeled to the west we crossed a low range sickly scented with musk from wattle tree blossom we skirted a marsh then the dawn faintly dappled with orange the dusk and peeled overhead the jay's laughter note harsh and shot the first sunstreak behind us and soon the dim dewy uplands were dreamy with light and full on our left flashed the reedy lagoon, and sharply the sugar loaf red on our right. A smothered curse broke through the bushman's brown beard. He turned in his saddle, his brick coloured cheek, flushed feebly with sundawn, said, Just what I feared. Last fortnight's late rainfall has flooded the creek. Black bowling broke snorted, and stood on the brink one instant. Then deep in the dark sluggish swirl plunged headlong, I saw the horse suddenly sink, till round the man's armpits the waves seemed to curl. We followed, one cold shock, and the deeper we sank than they did, and twice tried the landing in vain, the third struggle won it. Straight up the steep bank we staggered, then out on the skirts of the plain. The stock rider Alec, at starting, had got the lead and had kept it throughout. Twas his boast that through thickest of scrub he could steer like a shot, and the black horse was counted the best on the coast. The mare had been awkward enough in the dark. She was eager and headstrong, and barely half broke. She had had me too close to a big stringy bark and had made a near thing of a crooked choke. But now on the open, lit up by the morn, she flung the white foam flakes from nostril to neck and chased him, I, hatless, with shirt sleeves all torn, for he may ride ragged who rides from a wreck. And faster and faster across the wide heath we rode till we raced. Then I gave her her head, and she, Stretching out with the bit in her teeth, she caught him, outpaced him, and passed him, and led. We neared the new fence. We were wide of the track. 
I looked right and left. She had never been tried at a stiff leap. Twas little he cared on the black. You're more than a mile from the gateway, he cried. I hung to her head, touched her flank with the spurs. In the red streak of rail, not the ghost of a gap. She shortened her long stroke. She pricked her sharp ears. She flung it behind her with hardly a rap. I saw the post quiver where bowling broke struck and guessed that the pace we had come the last mile had blown him a bit. He could jump like a buck. We galloped more steadily then for a while. The heath was soon past. In the dim distance lay the mountain. The sun was just clearing the tips of the ranges to eastward. The mare, could she stay? She was bred very nearly as clean as Eclipse. She led, and as oft as he came to her side, she took the bit free and untiring as yet. Her neck was arched double, her nostrils were wide, and the tips of her tapering ears nearly met. You're lighter than I am, said Alec at last. The horse is dead beat and the mare isn't blown. She must be a good one. Ride on and ride fast. You know your way now. So I rode on alone. Still galloping forward, we passed the two flocks at Mintyre's hut and Malister's hill. She was galloping strong at the Warrigal rocks. On the Wallaby range, she was galloping still. And over the wasteland and under the wood, by down and by dale, and by fell and by flat, she galloped, and here in the stirrups I stood to ease her, and there in the saddle I sat to steer her. We suddenly struck the red loam of the track near the troughs. Then she reeled on the rise, from her crest to her croup, covered over with foam, and blood red her nostrils and blood shot her eyes. A dip in the dell where the wattle fire bloomed. A bend round a bank that had shut out the view. Large framed in the mild light the mountain had loomed, with a tall purple peak bursting out from the blue. I pulled her together, I pressed her, and she shot down the decline to the company's yard. And on by the paddocks, yet under my knee, I could feel her heart thumping, the saddle flaps hard. Yet a mile and another, and now we were near the goal, and the fields and the farms flitted past, and twixt the two fences I turned with a cheer. For a green grass-fed mare, t'was a far thing and fast, and labourers, roused by her galloping hoofs, saw a bare-headed rider and foam-sheeted steed, and shone the white walls and the slate-coloured roofs of the township. I steadied her then, I had need, where stood the old chapel, where stands the new church, since chapels to churches have changed in that town, a short, sidelong stagger, a long forward lurch, a slight choking sob, and the mare had gone down. I slipped off the bridle, I slackened the girth, I ran on and left her and told them my news, I saw her soon afterwards. What was she worth? How much for her hide? She had never worn shoes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.